So at this point, we've created some reference surfaces to help us program the wings of the Nike. Here we can see we're using a waterline toolpath to finish cut the outside surface of this wing. One problem with this waterline toolpath though, is this took an extremely long time to regenerate. And there's a way to actually check how long that took to regenerate. If I right click on this in the operations manager and say display options, I can turn on a checkbox for toolpath generation time. And I am now given this little number in parentheses here of 12 minutes and 38 seconds. So this toolpath took 12 minutes and 38 seconds to generate. Now it's worth noting, this is not the original toolpath. This toolpath has some really loosened up parameters and a lighter step over. The real toolpath took over an hour to generate here. So what I wanna show though is just how important your drive surface geometry selection is for regen time. Now, in this case, we are using the entire mesh body here as a drive surface, and we are using these surfaces to kind of trim the tool motion up and keep the tool inside of that area of the wing. I also believe there is a containment boundary. If we look from that plane, that kind of helps just trim this toolpath motion as well. So what I want to show here is a way to really improve your regen time on a part such as this. The first thing I'm going to do is let's turn off this toolpath and let's turn off all of our surfaces. And now I'm going to create a mesh from entities. And this is something I had to do a bunch of times on this Nike project for this exact reason of long regen times. I want to select individual facets. I want to keep the original entity and let's select those facets. So what I'm going to do is click and drag this brush along the wing of Nike here. It's worth noting that I have the selection tools turned on to intersect and wrap around mesh. So this is going to select all the way through the mesh, whether the facets face me or do not face me. So I've gone ahead and I've over selected here. I need to kind of trim up my selection a little bit by right clicking and dragging over things that I have selected to remove them from my selection. So here's a rough selection. Uh, you can see all the yellow area being the area we're selecting to make a new mesh. So let's say, okay. We can see this is 818,000 facets. I'll say okay to that. Again, this original mesh is over 5 million. So 818,000 is still significantly less than something that should work much better for us. So let's take that new mesh and move it over to a new level. And if we really wanted, we could actually trim this mesh because we don't need any of these faces back here and we don't need anything past this surface. So let's do a mesh trim to a surface. So we'll grab this surface first and we can see that trimmed up that mesh nicely to that surface. So we can say okay to that. And now if I click on this and press F4 to analyze, we're down to 720,000 facets, so even less. And now this time, let's go into our toolpath parameters. We're going to unselect the full mesh and select this new partial mesh. And note, we're going from 12 and a half minutes as a starting point. Let's toggle generate toolpath and click OK. This new toolpath took 4 minutes and 48 seconds to generate. Coming off of a 12 minute original regen time, this toolpath is completely identical from start to end. It's exactly the same toolpath. It just took 30% as long. And again, this is an abbreviated version of the real toolpath. My original toolpath took over an hour to generate, so I just saved myself 40 minutes by making a smaller, smarter selection. Rather than selecting everything and trying to trim that motion out, you're gonna have a much faster regen time if you select only the area you want to machine.